Let's follow a clinical case for the infusion technique of tissue management prior to taking an impression. A functional bonded core has been placed previously in this tooth. To begin, the tooth is prepped in the normal manner using a variety of ultradent burrs. The interproximal contacts are broken, followed by gross tooth reduction, refinement of the prep and extending the margins below the bonded core, and finally, occlusal reduction. Prepping has been completed, and as expected, excess blood and sulcular fluid are present. Next, a unit dose quantity of the hemostatic solution is prepared. This is accomplished by attaching a 1.2 cc syringe to the indispense container, and then filling with either viscostat, astringent, or astringent X. As mentioned earlier, viscostat will be used in this demonstration. 0.3 to 0.5 cc volume of solution is usually adequate for one preparation. A dental infuser tip is now attached to the syringe. To ensure a smooth and consistent delivery of viscostat, the syringe should be held as shown here, using the palm of the hand rather than the thumb to depress the plunger. The hemostatic solution is rubbed firmly against the bleeding cut tissues. Depending on the patient's periodontal and systemic health, Hemostasis may be obtained in as little as two to three passes around the sulcus, or up to as many as 20 or 30. With astringent, drizzle water on the area with intermittent suction to prevent drying of the coagulum onto the preparation. With viscostat, this is optional. The presence of hemostatic solution in the sulcus without formation of new coagulum indicates that hemostasis has been achieved. To test for completeness of the hemostasis, the sulcus is cleaned with a firm air water spray. Remember, if bleeding is the tissue's response to a firm air water spray, then bleeding will probably also occur during the impression syringing. Therefore, if bleeding occurs, more viscostat should be rubbed firmly against the area. Once again, hemostasis is tested with a firm air water spray. If no bleeding occurs, hemostasis has been achieved and we are ready to pack the cord. An ultra-packed knitted cord is soaked in viscostat and then packed into place. The cord size selected should be large enough to compensate for the compression of packing. After packing, the area is rinsed. The cords need to be left in place for only one to two minutes rather than the customary 10 to 15. Retraction is rapid because hemostasis has already been achieved. No blood is present to dilute the retraction agent in the cord. The cord is removed, and once again the area is cleaned and tested for completeness of hemostasis with a firm air water spray before the impression material is mixed. If any bleeding occurs, the dental infuser is used again to seal off the problem area. Sometimes the gingiva appears dark after the infusion process. This is due to iron precipitated coagulum in the tissues. This discoloration dissipates within 24 to 48 hours after the temporary is placed. Making an accurate impression the first time is expected if all the margins are clean, dry, and exposed. Notice the clean, highly detailed margins that are possible to achieve using this technique. Some dentists choose to pack a cord prior to subgingival tooth preparation. Ultradense knitted cord will not entangle in diamond burrs during cutting with high speeds. Packing prior to subgingival margin extension helps protect gingival attachment. 